Hey everybody, today we're going to Tarpon Springs, Florida. What we're going to do is we're going to go check out the seaside community. It's one of the biggest Greek populations in the country. It was settled in 1876. Um, it got its name by when the farmers and the fishermen got there, they saw tarpon jumping, so they named it after the tarpon fish. So that's why they call it Tarpon Springs, Florida. Um, it's a really cool place. We're going to stop by some historical places, give you a lot of facts about the area. And please uh, hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment. It, let us know what you want us to go check out in Florida or Georgia. Maybe there's a particular area you guys want to go. This whole channel is going to be about exploring different areas and taking suggestions from people who view these videos. And we'll go there and check it out for them. All right, so let's go to Tarpon Springs. Talk to you in a second. The Tarpon Arcade. In 1984, this was put on the National Registry of Historical Places. In the 1930s, throughout the 30s, it was a hotel. After Black Tuesday, right before the Great Depression, a lot of guests committed suicide here because they lost their fortunes. So, but today, there's a lot of things to do in here, so you can bring your family, your kids, and uh, come visit it. This is definitely one of the places you want to stop by, is the Tarpon Arcade. This is the old Tarpon Springs City Hall. Now it's a cultural center. It's been under reconstruction right now, they're redoing it all but it's also on the National Registry. So you should come check this out. And there's a lot of things to do inside, a lot of historical artifacts. But as you can see, they are totally redoing it now. I'm not exactly sure when it's gonna reopen, but it looks like major, major work is happening right now. You can see they have the trolleys they're going through showing people around well actually just driving people around but here's a better view of the historic train station from the outside and this is part of downtown Tarpon Springs we're gonna go into the historical district next but I just want you guys to check this out definitely come visit the train station well right now what we're doing is we're walking towards the historic train depot now it turns into a museum but it's still here standing so this used to be the train station but now as you can see it's just a road for cars. They lifted up the train tracks and no more train tracks. But they still kept the look and feel of the train station. Let's see if we can check some stuff out. And now they have different artifacts all the way from the 1800s back here. All right, I'm gonna take some video of the inside so you guys could see the train station on the inside. So definitely come visit here. A lot of historical stuff. A lot of cool old maps. Oh, an old desk from the railroad. This is the area that's called the Ticketmaster area. 
Okay. Oh, so like a little latch. It's, it's, you'd have to look at, it's a combination of how you pull these forward. Oh, wow. To undo the drawer. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, and that's, I guess that's how they did that. And then, so this is the Ticketmaster area, and then when you go up the ramp in the next section would be the cargo area, and you'll notice a difference in the flooring. Yeah. That um, the wood is thicker, and it's meant, you know, for no one to see, you know, just the, cargo oh wow so it was it's a little rougher uh, but we you know it looks nice now <laughs> but you can see how the wood is going to change oh yeah i see it very nice oh very impressive there's a lot back here on um the greek history of tarpon springs of when they came in to yeah. tarpon and the you know a lot about the sponging which you'll see more back this is a great place to come visit. Yes, yeah. So if you if your people are gonna come and have time, yeah, to come visit and check it out. Oh, absolutely. A lot of reading material too. A lot of books and um, in the second section, there's where you could just sit and read too if you wanted to, uh, without taking the books out. But you can look things up if you wanted to as well. Oh, that's uh, great. Books to for sale as well in the front. All right, I'll check it out. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you can see, you guys could spend at least a couple of hours here checking everything out. All the old tools, the old history, when the Greeks came in. Well, I definitely wanted to give you a little bit of a tour. The old historical train station. Also, what's really good about Tarpon Springs is that they have a lot of nightlife too. A lot of cafes, some breweries, some bars, they have live music. It's a really nice place to hang out when you're here at night. All right, let's go to the historical district where the sponge docks are. We'll talk all about that. On February 12th, uh, 1887, the town was incorporated and the railroad came in about a year later. Now what we're doing is we're coming up to the Greek Orthodox Cathedral Church. Beautiful church. You must come visit this church. It's right past this building on the right hand side. So definitely stop by there and check out the, the work that they did inside, how beautiful it is. So along this stretch, before we make a left into the uh, sponge docks, is a lot of restaurants, cafes, um, different parts of the church are still here very big this is the biggest Greek community around in the country so obviously there's a lot of Greek restaurants here and a lot of great food and like, again like I mentioned before the nightlife you can't beat it a lot of shops and it's not like the big brand shops the big box stores it's like little boutiques that you go in there and grab a really nice souvenirs and some a lot of handmade items. Okay, now we're turning into the sponge stocks. And now over here, there's a whole bunch of things to do. There is dolphin cruises. You go out on the fishing boats. You go to restaurants. You can buy sponges. This is the place that most people, when they think of Tarpon Springs, is where they come. And we'll do a, a walkthrough also. Yanni's restaurant, it's a really good restaurant. Eaten there quite a few times.
There's also some bakery down on Athens Street. So it's really probably one of the best bakeries I've ever been to. The old historic dive boats here. So you go on a dive boat and see an actual dive diving for sponges. You can see all the sponge boats and the fishing boats on the on the right. This is the Odyssey Cruise. Uh, my friend Rick works on the Odyssey Cruise, and what's really cool about the Odyssey is it'll take you out to an island, and you can get off onto the island, and you can walk around the island and pick up shells and check it out, and the only way to get there is by boat. This is the Tarpon Springs Aquarium. Great place to go. And there's a fish market down here. Pretty much plenty of things to do for all day. This is one of the uh, side roads. So you, all little shops. And that's the dive boat that you go see a real diver go and pick up sponges right in front of you. All right, let's take a walk. And we'll just do some sightseeing. Hell's Restaurant. Excellent restaurant. Definitely great bakery in there. Handmade soaps, a lot of gift shops. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around the corner over here and we'll give you some facts about the sponge industry. As you can see, all the fishing boats, all the sponge boats. So basically, you know, during the 1870s, a guy named John Cheney started the first local sponge business. And, in, and the industry grew in the 1890s. You know, people from Key West and Bahamas settled in Tarpon Springs, you know, to harvest and to process sponges. And the sponge industry really, really started to grow. In uh, 1905, a guy named John Kokorakis, I could be messing up the name pretty bad, but um, he introduced a technique called sponge diving. Um, he recruited divers and crew members from Greece, and the, that's how the Greek population started to grow. It, it generated millions of dollars, you know, per year. There was an, even a movie made about it in 1953 called Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef depicting the sponge industry. And it was all filmed in Tarpon Springs, too. You guys can still find it on the internet and watch the movie. It was a pretty good movie. But it, what happened was, in 1947, a red tide algae boom wiped out the sponge fields in the Gulf of Mexico, causing a lot of the sponge divers to switch to fishing and shrimping. And some of them just had to close their doors. You know, but over time, you know, the sponges recovered. And in the 1980s, businesses experienced a boom when the sponge disease that killed a lot of Mediterranean sponges, so the only place they could get them is here in Florida. So there was a boom on it. So if it wasn't for the sponge industry and uh, the guy bringing diving for sponging, 
because at the beginning they used long poles to hook the sponges and bring them up. So then when he introduced divers and brought them in from Greece, more and more Greeks moved here. And that's how the whole Greek community started. As you can see, Greek flags. If you go to a lot of these restaurants, you hear people speaking Greek. That's one of the dolphin boats I was telling you about earlier. So definitely come check this out. A lot of the boats are really, really old. But yeah, but in the, it recovered and it's still, they're still sponging today. And maybe not as much as it used to be in the boom time, but it is a, uh, industry here but now it's like tourists restaurants gift shops but if you want food really good food this is where to come so let's just walk around and take in some of the sights Okay, the next step we're going to take is we're going to take a trip to St. Michael's Shrine. And when we get there, I'll tell you a story about St. Michael's Shrine. Pretty soon I feel like, you know, nothing wants to happen. This is the entrance to St. Michael's Shrine. It, take, it dates back to the 1930s. This is the only shrine to St. Michael's in the United States. It dates back to the 1930s and the miracles of healing a boy named Steve Tislaklas from brain cancer. So, as the story goes, during his illness, the child prayed before an icon of St. Michael, the Archangel, telling his mother that St. wanted them to build a shrine to him. Steve survived the tumor, and the shrine was constructed in their backyard. So, basically, he had... A tumor that he prayed to St. Michael's and he was cured so they built this in their backyard and uh, not only that but a lot of people are claiming that they came here and they were cured of their illness beautiful little church uh, definitely come visit but a lot of people do come here to try to get healed let me see if I can get a photo of the inside so we'll take some As you can see, there's people inside praying, asking for help. This looks like the original house, and they literally built the church in their backyard. As you can see, it's just on a regular residential street. This land was never meant to have a church built on it because it's between houses. But, as the story goes, St. Michael's asked them to build it, so they did. And their son was cured. 
Well, I hope you guys like the uh, tour of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Please remember, please hit the like button, hit the bell, and subscribe. So next time we go exploring, we will uh, you'll get notified. Also, um, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave below. As you know, we're learning to do this, so the more people involved, the better it'll be. So suggestions on places to explore would be greatly appreciated. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for watching.